What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you've been in the market for 94 Jordan 1s, you've probably been in the market for 85 Jordan 1s and vice versa. That's the name of the game with Vintage J's. So today we're gonna talk about the differences and try to help you figure out which one is best for you. For those of you that are new, this is Vintage Kicks Gallery. <music> As similar as these may seem, they are very different in a number of ways, and we're gonna start off with the differences. Um, the key difference is gonna help you identify a 94 from an 85 is to start that check. So take a look at the checks on these, and you're gonna notice right off the bat, they look nothing alike. So the check on a 94 is made a new buck. They have a tendency of fading out, they chip, they have a weathered look at this point, unless they're really well preserved, dead stock, et cetera. When you plan on wearing them, they're gonna fade out and do this over time anyway. The 85 has a signature oversized check. It's made of vinyl. It has that look that we are so accustomed to and is really unmistakable as an 85. 94s have the biggest uh, toe box perforations of any Jordan 1. Take a look. It's crazy. I mean, that is one way you can identify a 94 from an 85, hands down, without a uh, question. All right, let's take a look at a couple of the other signature things. Number one, take a look at the way that the heel kind of bulges out on a 94. It has a very distinct little bulge there. The other thing is the tongues. Look how short a 94 tongue is in comparison to an 85. Very, very different. Finally, let's look at the size indicator. So they're both on the sock liners, but the 94 has a really oversized distinct size stamp, whereas the 85 has the production date, the small size, and the factory, just as we're all accustomed to. So which one is better? All right, right off the bat, I'm gonna tell you, if you plan on wearing them, go with the 94. I really believe that. I think the 94s are just worlds different when you talk about comfort. A couple reasons for this. Number one, the ankle and the heel padding here, it's still intact on 94, whereas most of the 85s are gonna be crunchy and hardened by now. The second thing is the air units. The air units in the 94s are predominantly still intact. Most of the 85s have disintegrated right now, so you're basically walking on the ground. So when you wear a 94 all day and you wear an 85 all day, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. You cannot compare the two. Do yourself a favor, if you plan on wearing them, go with the 94. If you're just gonna keep it on the shelf and it's gonna be a history piece, 85's not a bad idea. I mean, after all, this is the OG. This is the original, this is an actual piece of history. Uh, I think they're far more important, and overall, it's a better looking shoe. Can't deny that. I mean, the shape's better. Everything about it's pretty much better. Okay, let's talk about the strengths and weaknesses. 94s do have some tendencies uh, with aging that you do need to be aware of, especially if you're in the market and you're asking questions. Just like the 85s, by the way, watch the buyer's guide, have a tendency of hardening collars, 94s have a tendency of sole splitting. And what I mean by that is the soles separate from the uppers. So this one's already starting to do it. The glue they used on the 94 is pretty weak, especially in comparison to the 85s. Not the biggest of deals because they are stitched. It's not like they're gonna fall apart, but you do wanna be aware of that. And always ask if you're in the market, have they, just, have they separated yet? Okay, other strengths and weaknesses are the check. The checks on the 85s have a tendency of cracking, flaking, that kind of stuff. Whereas on the 94s, they fade out really bad, they chip. Uh, the new buck just does not hold up over time, especially in comparison to the 85. So overall, this shoe is going to appear older than this by way of the check. Other weaknesses on the 94, they only made them in Chicago and bred colorways. So if you want any other colorway, you have to go with the 85. Not that it really matters, but let's talk about boxes. The box for the 94, which, let's see. Well, I have one somewhere. I'll put a graphic on the screen. Is one of the best boxes in the history of the Jordan brand, whereas the 85 box is the one we're always used to. 
Which one's better? I mean, obviously the OG's piece of history, it's great. But as far as retros go, you cannot beat the 94 box. It's kind of silly to buy a shoe for the box, but after all, we're all crazy. All right, guys, so the only other differences I can talk about are this is made in Korea, this is made in China, who really cares? Longevity of the collars, obviously the 94s are gonna be better in that aspect. But let's talk about something you really need to know if you're in the market for either of these, sizing. The 94 sizing is gonna be very comparable to your retro of today, whereas the 85, they run super small. So if you're a 10 and a half in a 94, you're probably going to be at least an 11 in 85. So keep that in mind. A lot of people think they run the same size. That's not true. There's a very big difference in that. All right, guys, the last thing you really need to consider is your budget. Um, the 94s have gotten really expensive, but they're still gonna be cheaper than 85s overall. Now, most of the 94s are in better condition than 85s, so when you go on eBay, you go on wherever, you're gonna look and you're gonna see it incredibly high prices for 94s, that doesn't mean you still can't find deals. Yes, even in a post last dance market, 94s can still be had for deals. And that is important to realize. Don't get caught up in this hype. Again, I'll tell you, don't spend thousands and thousands of dollars on these. Take your time, be patient, and you're gonna find the right pair. All right guys, I'll see you next time.